In this video, I'll show you how to solve optimization problems in calculus. This will serve as part one in this series. Optimization problems are essentially problems of finding the absolute maximum or minimum of a function, which is easy to do and we already know how to do it based on videos we've done in the past. But we must first be able to set up the problem, which is the hard part. The steps in solving optimization problems vary, but these are the ones that work for me. First, you need to understand the problem. Next, if applicable, you could draw a picture. Three, introduce notation. In other words, introduce the variables. Four, figure out the variable to be maximized and use the information in the question to express this variable in terms of one other variable. And lastly, find the absolute maximum or minimum of the function on its domain. Let's start with question number one. In this question, they are asking us to find two numbers whose difference is 100 and whose product is a minimum. So let's introduce these two numbers. Let's set x as our first number and y as our second number. And they're saying their difference is 100, which means that if I were to take the difference of x minus y, it would give us 100. And it's also telling us that their product is a minimum. So if I were to multiply x times y, I would end up with a product. So what we have to do in a situation like this, given that we just found two equations, we can combine them. And one way to combine them is by rearranging one of these equations and then inputting it into the other. So I'm going to rearrange this one and solve for y. And this is totally random. You could solve for x, but I'll solve for y. And I end up with x minus 100 is equal to y. So notice I, I took this y over and I brought this 100 over and I ended up with this. And like I said, you want to input what you found into your other equation. So let's apply this equation into this equation. And this gives us x times x minus 100 is equal to p. And I'll simplify the left side and this gives us x squared minus 100x is equal to p. So now that you've combined the two equations that you found, you want to find the critical numbers. And the critical numbers are found by first finding the derivative of the function and then setting that derivative equal to zero. By setting it equal to zero, you could solve for your x and this number will help us determine whether at that point, at that critical number, if there is a local minimum or maximum, depending on whether it's increasing or decreasing before and after that critical number. Let me demonstrate what I mean. First, I'll take the derivative of p, which gives us 2x, and I'm using the power rule, and I'm using the power rule for this term as well, minus 100. And I'm now going to set p is equal to 0 and solve for x. And if I solve for x, I'll have to bring this number over and divide both sides by 2 at this point, which leads me to x is equal to 50. So this is a critical number that we can use to determine the local minimum or maximum. How do we do that? Well, first of all, you have to find out what is, what's happening before 50 and after 50. And we're going to set up a little chart where we say, what happens when x is less than 50 and what happens when x is greater than 50. And we're going to create this chart and evaluate numbers before 50 and after 50 using the derivative. So let's choose a number that's less than 50. Let's choose 0. If I put 0 into my derivative, I end up with a negative number. And if I put a number greater than 50 into my derivative, I end up with a positive number. So the way we interpret this is that as x was approaching x is equal to 50, it was decreasing. And as soon as it hit 50, and even after 50, it began to increase. So I want you to picture this on a chart. As x was going towards 50, it was decreasing. 
and then at 50 it began to increase so we can assume and by the way this is just an example here so we can assume that at x is equal to 50 there was a local minimum now to find your y value that corresponds to this we're going to take this number 50 we will apply it to this equation so x minus y is equal to 100 I'm going to apply 50 right here and I end up with 50 minus 100 is equal to my y and therefore y is equal to negative 50 so there you have it we just found two numbers x at positive 50 and y at negative 50 whose difference is 100 and whose product is also a minimum. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.